Uh, we'll have um, a quick look now at what we call the inclining experiment. An inclining experiment is carried out to establish the, as near as we can, the correct center of gravity or kg of the vessel when there's no cargo, nothing on board. In other words, at the light displacement. When we have nothing on board, no stores, cargo, anything, we need to establish the center of gravity or the kg at that posi at that point. It's very important because once we start loading cargo, fuel, stores, etc., we use our table to calculate our new center of gravity, compare that to our meta center, and that gives us the GM of the vessel. And the GM is a very important value to to know because it basically indicates how stable our vessel is. So let's see what we mean by an inclining experiment. What happens is the vessel is in dock, in still water, and along the centre line we will have what we call a plumb line. So that's from A to B would be this plumb line straight down. Alongside B would be um, perpendicular to the centre line would be this baton. There's our centre of uh, kg, centre of gravity of the vessel. We don't know. Uh, where it is, but our meta centre is there, so it's going to be somewhere around there. We will know the KM of the vessel because um, with our draft we can work out the displacement. So if we know our draft accurately, we can simply use the formula to calculate the displacement of the vessel, going to the hydrostatic particulars, or even going to the hydrostatic particulars with our draft, and get the KM of the vessel. So if we can find the GM of the vessel, then we could find the kg because it's simply km minus gm. So we place this weight on deck. And what happens is the weight is moved across. As the weight is moved across, the vessel inclines. So we look at this next sketch here. The weight has been moved across and the vessel inclines and the plumb line going straight down there from A to C and creates this angle here. A to B is the length of the plumb line. B to C will be the deflection that we can measure on this pattern. GM is the value we're looking for. G to G1 we can work out because it's simply the weight that we put on multiplied by the distance it's travelled divided by the total weight of the vessel. So G to G1 is simply the, the listing moment, if you like, W, the weight times the distance over final weight. So if we know that value, we know that value, we know that value, because these are similar triangles, we can work out the GM of the vessel. So in the book here, we can see that A to B is our plumb line length. B to C is the deflection that we talked about. And there's our baton. There's our weight going across. And we've got the two similar triangles. Both right angle triangles, of course. So A over B... A over B, in other words, plumb line length over deflection has got to equal GM over G to G1. We talked about G, G1 just before as being the weight times the shift or the, the distance it's covered over the total weight of the vessel. So GM has got to be that weight times the shift over the uh, weight of the vessel multiplied by plumb line length over deflection. We know the plumb line length because we can measure it before we do the experiment. We measure the deflection so we know this value. We know that value, the weight. We know S which is the deflection. We know the total weight of the vessel, therefore we can find the GM. Once we've found that GM, subtract it from the KM and that gives us our, in our fluid kg at that point. Of course this isn't our light ship kg. What we then have to do now with this fluid kg is start drawing up a table and subtracting the various weights that are existing on board at the moment. And we'll look at that in, uh, in an example.